Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at how you set up a Colorlight X1 sender unit to take an HDMI feed and output it on our big old panel. So today we're going to be looking at how to set up a DVD player, which could be any other HDMI source. We're going to connect it to our X1 sender unit and we're going to play a DVD onto our big old matrix behind me. So what is the X1 sender? So this is a device that will take either an HDMI uh, or DVI feed. So we have HDMI in and two DVI ins. It will scale the image and it will output it via one of the two Ethernet ports on the back of the panel. Quite a simple device, um, relatively straightforward config. So let's go through it and we'll talk through the bits and pieces as we get it set up. First thing we need to connect is power. It takes a standard IEC power cable which comes in the box, um, otherwise known as a kettle lead in the UK. There we go. We need an HDMI input. Now note at this point that this HDMI input is for video only. Uh, the colour light box doesn't do anything with audio. Um, it's had, it has what's called an audio input, but I'm not quite sure what that does. It, it doesn't seem to cover anything in the software. And then we have an output via our Ethernet cable that's going to go to our, our panels, to our colour light receiver cards. Oh, there we go. And here's our cable uh, that we configured in the previous episode, which I'll link to up above now. The only other thing we need for configuration purposes is a USB cable, which also comes in the box. So we can plug the B end of our USB cable in, and that's the connectivity that we need on this device. So I can park that here now, and I'll go and plug the power and whatnot in in a second. Now, I'm going to be connecting today to um, our trusty Blu-ray player here. Uh, this is one that I've borrowed from the house. And this one works really well for us because on the back it's got an HDMI output and it's also got component audio output so that we can hook up a pair of RCA cables and take the audio out to our amplifier or wherever it needs to go. Now, if your DVD player or device doesn't have a separate audio out, then you might want to run your audio out through things, something like an AV receiver, which can separate the audio, or you can buy a little 20 pound box, which takes HDMI in and gives you a couple of RCA outputs, um, and it acts as a pass, pass through for the, for the video. So just something that you might need to be aware of. So I'm going to plug my HDMI, HDMI cable in that's going to the color light, to the sender. And I have an audio cable here ready to connect so that we can hear what's happening later on in the video. So that's done. Right, that's those two hooked up. Let me go and get uh, power connected and I'll be right back. So I've plugged it in. Now I'm going to turn it on with the, the switch on the front panel. There we go. That's now switched on and it's starting to just uh, boot up. While that's getting ready, I'm going to navigate to LED vision on my laptop. Now I've just plugged the USB cable from the back of the X1 into my laptop so that we can configure it. 
Now previously, when we were setting up LED vision, we set the uh, control section to use net card. But we're not using ethernet this time uh, from the PC to set anything up. We're gonna be using uh, the sender via USB. So let's go in and get started. So I'm gonna go into control and LED screen settings. The password as ever is 168. And as you can see, LED vision is still set up as it was when we left it from configuring the panel. So it's set to net card, which is not what we need. We need to go to sender. And there we are. It's now talking to our sender box uh, over USB instead of talking on the ethernet. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to set the size in our output window here. So it's defaulted to a size of 1920 by 1080, uh, which would be a lovely large resolution for a panel, but ours is a rather more modest 512 wide by 256 high. So let's go and set that up in here. Now we can either drag it manually like this and hope to get it about right, um, that's close, or down at the bottom right here, we can put it in manually. So I can put in 512 by 256. There we go. And then save as preset. So I'm gonna save that as a preset. I'm just gonna stick it in the first one and not worry about the naming for now. There we go, so that's the size of our panel configured on the sender device, so it knows what size uh, it's got to be scaling things for. Our source is going to be DVI-1. Next thing we need to set is the control area. So I'm going to skip along to control area. And that again is set to, well, this time it's set to 1024 by 512 uh, for each of the outputs on port one and port two. Now on the back of the X1, there were two ethernet outputs for driving panels. Now, depending on how you've configured your panels, if you've got two separate ones that are side by side or maybe split separately, then you can drive half of your video window off of one port and half of it off the other port. You can replicate the same output onto both or however you wish to do it. So for this, for simplicity, I'm gonna set both port one and port two to do the same thing um, because then it doesn't matter which port I plug the ethernet for the panels into, uh, it'll just work. So our output width is 512 as before and our height is 256. I'm going to set the width again on the second port to, to be exactly the same. And just hit save. There we go. And that's saving. So both our outputs now are set to send the full screen display from uh, the source settings window uh, out to our panels. We don't need to worry about anything in the other section. Um, if you wish to test the panel, uh, you can do here. So we could set it to red. Wow, that's bright. Green or so on um, or black. So we'll turn that off again. Now, when I put that onto red just then, that was rather bright behind me. Uh, and I don't think we need it to be that bright. So on the front of the color light, uh, you've got a plus and minus symbol uh, with a numeric display. Now that tells you uh, the brightness of the panel. So I'm gonna drop this right back down and I can see it going behind me. Oh, I've gone too far, it's gone to zero. There we go, I'm gonna set that at four out of the 16 possible. So there we go, that's a bit better. And then I'm gonna turn it off. So that's my brightness set up so that I can uh, I can play with it. 
Let me just set that to black. There we go. Or off. There we are, that's better. You can see me better now. So that's all we need to do in the other screen here. I'm going to go to detect receivers now and we'll just double check that the X1 is seeing the, the eight uh, receiver cards that are in the panel behind me. So I've gone to detect receiver tab and I'm going to hit detect all receivers. And there they are. It's seeing that we've got eight receiver cards all connected and they're all connected to port number one, which is what I'd expect at the moment. So that's good. Right, let's get the DVD side set up, shall we? So I've gone back to the video source settings tab, and at the moment it's telling me there is no signal on HDMI. And that is because I've not turned on uh, the player yet. So let me turn that on. And that will start to wake up. Lovely. And we can see immediately that we've got a lovely Samsung logo behind me. So the display has woken up nicely and it is now taking the full size page from our video feed and it's having a little bit of a flicker. I think it's just settling down. Now the only problem that we might find with this is that the video has been squashed, it's been flattened uh, to make it fit the resolution of the panel. So we need to look at adjusting that to make it fit. So I'm going to put a DVD on and we'll have a look and we'll adjust it as we go. So there we are, the video, the DVD has started and it's given us the menu, which is full screen uh, and that looks good. But let's play the video. So I've just pressed play on the front of the DVD. Now, as our video is playing, we can see that there are black bars at the top and the bottom of the image. This is because the video format is 16.9 um, aspect ratio and our panel, in this case, is 16 to 8. So the original format of the video is designed to be slightly taller than our panel and the panel is compensating uh, by shrinking the width slightly and giving us the black bars at the top and the bottom. Now I don't want that to happen, I want to be able to see the full video on my panel. So we need to tell the scaler, the X1 sender, to stop doing that and to zoom in a little bit, uh, albeit chopping the ends off, but to use the whole panel. To do that, I'm going to go into my HDMI settings. Uh, the video format has just updated to tell us the, the format that's coming in. Um, and it's 1920 by 1080 as we expected. So we're going to go into cropping. The settings on here start out at the resolution of the feed coming in on the HDMI. So 1920 by 1080 in our case. Now 1080 is too tall for us so we need to shrink that a bit to match the format of our panel. So I'm going to enable cropping and our height for this panel is exactly half of the width. So the width is currently 1920, half of 920 is 960. So there's our width set at 960 and as you can see that gives us a border at the bottom. Now I want to get rid of that uh, I want at the V the area cropped to be exactly half uh, halfway. Now our height is 960 and as you can see that's going to chop off a bit of the bottom of the image. Now I don't want it to chop just the bottom I want it to chop the top and the bottom so we can drag this down 
uh, to balance it out. Now the 1080 figure that we, we started with, uh, less 960, which is the height that I want, uh, gives us a difference of 120. If I halve that and set Y to 60, which is half of it, that puts the, the bit being cropped directly in the center. And I can now come out. And this image has now been zoomed in slightly and it's displaying fully on the panel from top to bottom. And we can save that once again as a preset. Number one, thank you. And that is a very basic introduction to how to set up an X1 sender to display video uh, on your panel. We, we've gone into video source settings. We set up the size of the panel at the beginning. We went into control center and we set the height and width of both of the outputs on the panel. We did a double check on the receivers to make sure they're all there and they're all talking to us. And then we went in and enabled cropping to actually tailor the output to that that we wanted. Now, I hope you found that useful. That's a very, very quick setup, but I think it will give you a good starter for 10 to get you up and running. You might need to tailor your numbers and things differently to make it fit, but uh, this will get you up and going. So I hope you found that useful and uh, I'm going to sit and watch a bit more Top Gun and we'll see you on the next one. Take care, have fun. Bye bye.